Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, I am going to talk about rocket engines and propulsion. Propulsion is a system used by rockets to take off from the ground. It is based on Newton's laws of motion. What is a rocket engine? A rocket engine is a machine which turns fuel into thrust. It has two parts. The combustion chamber and the nozzle. The combustion chamber is the place in which the fuel and oxidizer meet together to combust. The nozzle accelerates the exhaust of the combustion chamber to sonic and supersonic speeds. Types of nozzles. There are two types of nozzles. Bell nozzle and aerospike nozzle. Bell nozzle are traditional nozzles. They have to be optimized especially for sea level and vacuum levels. Whereas aerospike engines have a good specific impulse at both sea level and vacuum. Thrust and specific impulse. Thrust, thrust is the amount of force which moves the rocket upward. The weight of the rocket brings it down due to gravity while the thrust contracts the gravity and helps the rocket move forward. Specific impulse is used to describe the efficiency of an engine. Types of propulsion. There are three types of propulsion. Chemical, ion and nuclear. The chemical propulsion rocket is widely used. It is driven by combustion. The nuclear type is driven by fission and fusion. The ion motor provides the possibility of charging atoms by stripping electrons. Chemical propulsion. There are three types of chemical propulsion. Solid, liquid and hybrid. In liquid rockets, the oxidizer and fuel are stored in separate containers. In solid rockets, they are mixed together and placed in a single cylinder. In hybrid engines, the oxidizer is stored in a tank while the fuel is stored as a solid in a cylinder. Then the oxidizer and the fuel react in order to provide thrust. Solid engines. Solid engines use solid propellants. For this, oxidizers such as hydrochloric acid and ammonium perchlorate is used and fuel as aluminum and magnesium. We mix together these in a binder such as P-band or HTPB. P-band stands for polyglutadine acronitrile. HTPB stands for hydroxyl terminated polybutadine. One is the outer casing. Two is the igniter which helps ignite the fuel. Three is the hole for the exhaust to come out. Four is the place where the fuel gets converged to the nozzle. Five is the place where the nozzle gets diverged and then it creates a hot exhaust. Cold gas engine is a type of hybrid engine in which high pressure gases such as helium and argon are used. These gases are stored in composite over wrapped pressure vessels. These are mainly used in reaction control systems or RCS. Monopropellant engine is a type of liquid engine. In these engines, we use hydrazine or hydrogen peroxide as a fuel. For hydrazine, we use a catalyst such as iridium infused alumina. A catalyst of potassium permanganate is used for an hydrogen peroxide fuel. Bipropellant engine. This is a type of liquid engine in which we use a fuel and an oxidizer. We mostly use hydrolox, methalox and keralox. But we also use hypergolics. Hypergolics are fuels which combust together on contact. Propellants used for liquid or hybrid engines. For monopropellant engines, we use 2-30% to 30 hydrogen peroxide, hydrazine, nitrous oxide and steam. For white propellant engines, we use rocket propellant 1 or RP1 with LOX, also known as Kerelox. Liquid hydrogen and liquid oxygen, also known as hydrolox. 
liquid methane and liquid oxygen also known as methyl ox liquid hydrogen and liquid fluorine liquid hydrogen liquid fluorine along with lithium for some other engines we use hypergolic propellants such as udmh and nitrogen tetroxide udmh stands for unsymmetrical dimethyl hydrazine liquid engine cycles what is an engine cycle an engine cycle is an active mechanism which increases the combustion chamber pressure without increasing the fuel chamber pressure open cycle or gas generator we usually opt these for hydrocarbon fuels in this some of the fuel and some of the oxidizer go to the pre burner then the pre burner's exhaust is goes to the turbine which in turn spins the pumps then the fuel and oxidizer go to the combustion chamber and react is ros vikas engine uses this method close cycle engines in this there are two types fuel to stage combustion cycle and oxygen to stage combustion cycle for fuel to stage combustion cycles we can't use hydrocarbon fuels in this the fuel is sent to the pre burner along with some oxygen then the fuel to gas is used to spin the turbine and then the exhaust from the turbine goes to the combustion chamber the needed amount of oxidizer is also sent to the combustion chamber to make oxygen rich stage combustion cycles possible we need an super alloy which can withstand the heat of hot gaseous oxygen in this some of the fuel goes to the pre burner while all the oxygen goes to the pre burner then the o2 gas is used to spin the turbines which then comes to the combustion chamber the needed amount of fuel is also sent to the combustion chamber isros sce200 is an example of oxygen rich uh, closed cycle it is planned for to be used on the unified launch vehicle or ulv an example of fuel rich stage combustion cycle is the main engine of the space shuttle which is rs25 filled flow stage combustion cycles in this we use dual pre burners the fuel is sent to the one of the pre burners and some of the oxygen is also sent the much of the oxygen goes to the turbine and some of the fuel also reaches the oxygen pre burner then the fuel pre burner and oxygen pre burner's exhaust go to the combustion chamber only three engines have been made using this method russia's rd270 the integrated powerhead demonstrator and the raptor engine the raptor engine is the only engine which has flown on test flights expand the cycle in this the fuel is sent uh, through the combustion chamber via small pipes then it reaches the turbine and the turbine powers the pumps then the ex uh, exhaust from the turbine is sent to the combustion chamber along with the needed amount of oxygen the american rl10 is an example of an expander cycle it was manufactured by aerojet rocketdyne in the tap off cycle the fuel and oxidizer go to the combustion chamber and then the combustion chamber exhaust goes to the turbine which powers the pumps examples of this is the river uh, river 1 engine of fireflies ro rocket alpha electric cycle in this we use a motor to power the pumps rocket labs rutherford is an example of an electric cycle engine ion propulsion ion engines use electricity to make ions which in turn provide thrust types of ion engines there are three types of ion engines grid ion thrusters hall effect thrusters and plasma propulsion engines in grid ion thrusters the neutral propellant atom is sent to the chamber and the electron gun shoots out negative ions which destabilize the neutral propellant atom and make it divide into ions then the ions are sent through two grids which lets the positive ions out and a neutralizing electron gun is used to neutralize the positive ions hall effect thrusters in this an electromagnetic field is used to propel the 
positive ions and cathode neutralizer shoots out negative ions which neutralize the positive ions plasma propulsion engine these type of engines use antenna which provide radio waves and microwaves which heats the gas gas is sent through a quartz tube to confine it before it ionizes then an antenna is used to ionize the gas to form a plasma then magnetic coils are used to confine the ionized plasma then an icrh antenna heats the plasma to many millions of degrees kelvin and magnetic nozzle is used to create a directed plasma flow propellants for ion engines we usually use xenon and krypton as propellants for the ion engines nuclear propulsion for nuclear engines we use a controlled nuclear reaction in order to provide thrust in nuclear pulse engines we use controlled nuclear explosions in order to provide thrust as this is dangerous we have only invented nuclear thermal engines nuclear thermal engines use a mini reactor to heat the fuel and make thrust only two countries have been successful uh, making this type of engine the soviet unions rd0410 and the american nerva if we use a solid core for the nuclear reactor we can get a specific impulse of 850 2000 seconds if we use a liquid core we can get a very high specific impulse of 1300 2500 if we swap it with a gas core we can reach an astonishingly high specific impulse of 3000 to 5000 seconds thank you